조선의 시월입니다. 환희로운 경축의 밤입니다. 이 시각 저 멀리 저국방선 하늘 땅 바다 초소의 미도운 장경들과 도시와 마을들 굴지의 공장들과 협동벌 탄광들과 관산 어촌들과 교정들에서도 이 나라 천만 아들 딸들이 경건히 우러르며 마음 달려오는 여기 수도의 경축광장입니다 영광과 자극 넘치는 미대한 밤 10월 명절의 밤이거니 우리 얼마나 간관 경난들을 이기며 여기까지 왔던가 더듬어 볼수록 추억 뜨겁고 새겨 볼수록 한없는 긍지의 가슴 부풀어 이 밤에로 달려온 길결을 돌이켜 봅니다 역사의 한 시각이 한 나라 한 민족의 장례를 결정하기도 합니다 해방 후 처음으로 맞이한 조선의 시월 우리의 붉은 단기가 심차게 나붙기기 시작한 역사의 그날이 찬란한 오늘을 안아왔습니다 못 잊을 그날에 미래한 힘과 부흥으로 전놈 떨칠 내조국의 앞날이 기약됐습니다 전변의 시대, 전환의 시대, 강국의 시대 참으로 영광스러운 75년이 흘렀습니다 허나 그 길에는 조국과 혁명, 인민의 운명을 지켜 피와 눈물과 고뇌를 걸음걸음 찍으며 약진의 대로를 한치 한치 열어간 우리 당의 천신만고가 영역히 새겨져 있습니다 그래서 이 밤을 밝히는 저 밝음에 우리 당이 해쳐온 세월의 모진 눈비들이 비껴오고 천만 밤을 지새온 샹도의 그 불빛들이 오려와 우리 눈곱 뜨겁게 젖어두는 것이 아닙니까 지셀 줄 모르는 열정의 밤은 위대한 힘으로 더 높이 섰고 겨울을 내 저국의 찬란한 아침을 부르고 있습니다 잠시 후 여기 수도 평양 김일성 광장에서는 조선노동당 창원 75돌 경축 열병식이 거행되게 됩니다 오늘의 열병광장은 해방 후 정기적 혁명 무력의 탄생을 선포하던 역사의 그날 마차의 기관총을 메우고 나아가던 청소한 우리 인민군대가 당의 령도 밑에 얼마나 거대한 힘을 비축하였는가를 감히 깊이 돌이켜보는 추억과 감동의 뜻깊은 장소로 될 것입니다 이번 열병식에는 명예기병 상징 종대를 선두로 53개의 도보 종대와 22개의 기계화 종대, 총 75개의 열병 종대가 참가하게 됩니다 열병 종대마다 지니고 있는 부대의 전통과 위훈을 합치면 당의 령도 따라 우리의 혁명적 무장력이 걸어온 자랑찬 승리의 역사가 될 것입니다 기억도 생생합니다 할아버지 세대로 불리우는 정규 무력의 첫 열병식 참가자들이 원자탄과 맞쏘야 했던 무기는 보병총에 불과했습니다 그러나 오늘의 열병식에 참가하게 될 그들의 손자 세대는 너무도 변했고 누구도 상상 못할 힘을 가지고 세상에 그것을 과시하게 됩니다 지금 이 시각 우리 당의 창건자이시며 건설자이신 위대한 수룡 김일성 동지와 위대한 영도자 김종일 동지께서 경축광장을 굽어보시며 우리 모두에게 따뜻한 축복을 보내실 것입니다 온 세계가 주체조선의 강대성이 힘있게 시위될 이 광장을 지켜보고 있을 것입니다
1945년 10월 10일로부터 2020년 10월 10일 75성상 2만 7,392일이 흘렀습니다 우리 당이 조국과 인민을 이끌어 이 광장까지 오는 길은 결코 순탄치 않았습니다 간관 초행길도 있었습니다 불타는 강을 건널 때도 있었습니다 폭풍 치는 온도에 나설 때도 있었습니다 어찌하여 우리 당이 참기 어려운 고난 속에서도 정때 많은 억세게 들어줘야 했고 형언할 수 없는 도전 광풍에 부닥치면서도 전쟁 억제력을 다지고 또 다져야 했습니까 이제 우리는 인민의 감 높은 지위와 존엄을 만대로 담보해 줄 억척의 지지점이 무엇이며 인민에게 줄수 있는 사랑 중에 제일 큰 사랑이 과연 어떤 것인가를 위대한 어머니의 역사 속에서 뜨겁게 안아보게 됩니다 지금 관중들의 환호 속에 오늘의 열병식 조악을 맡은 국무위원회 연주단과 조선인민군 군악단이 광장에 입장하고 있습니다 Hi, good evening from Seoul. If you are tuning into this YouTube stream, uh, my name is Chad O'Carroll. I'm the CEO of Korea Risk Group, which is the producer of NK News, a specialist North Korea-focused publication. Um, we have been waiting for hours for this military parade to start. It's a very unusual set of circumstances today. Normally, these military parades from North Korea are shown uh, from about 9 a.m. till about 11.30 a.m. But today, it appears that the parade took place very late night, uh, maybe between midnight and 2 a.m. Um, so this is a very special um, program today. We've, we've not done this before, but after a suggestion from one of our readers, we thought it'd be good to bring together some of our analysts to make sense of the parade as it happens live. So um, we've got three guests with, us, with me today. Um, I'll just ask them to introduce themselves quickly. Ankit Panda, do you want to introduce yourself? Just let people know who you are. Sure. Thanks, Chad. Um, I'm Ankit Panda. I'm a author of the recent book, Kim Jong-un and the Bomb, Survival and Deterrence in North Korea, and a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Happy to be here. Great. And we've also got Jongmin Kim here. Uh, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. This is Jongmin Kim, so a correspondent in K-News, and I'll be monitoring Kim Jong-un's And we've also got from the Netherlands, uh, Joost Olimans. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, Joost? Hi, Chad. Um, I'm Joost, uh, Joost. And um, uh, together with my co-author, we... Um, just wrote a book on the North Korean Armed Forces, which is called uh, North Korea's Armed Forces uh, on the Path of Songun. And uh, I regularly write for uh, a variety of uh, websites and news agencies on uh, the DP DPRK's Armed Forces. Great, thanks everyone. So we're currently seeing what seems to be a uh, mixture of video clipped together of various aspects of the parade. It's unclear yet if we're going to be seeing the full show or if this is a very polished, uh, shortened um, production. Um, Ankit, can you just tell us about the significance of today and like why so many people are interested in watching this parade just to start out? Sure. I mean, so we had a very good idea of what was happening with North Korea's nuclear forces in 2017 of course when we were seeing strategic missile tests every couple of weeks or at least what felt like every couple of weeks that year um, and of course the april 15th 2017 military parade on kim il-sung's birthday day of the sun was unforgettable for a variety of reasons i mean it was the first time north korea showed off um, as much as it had we did get two parades since then one in february 2018 which was also remarkable for including the hwasong 15 their largest ever missile and we got a much more modest parade in September 2018. While diplomacy was ongoing, North Korea effectively 
quote, denuclearized that parade. Uh, it basically showed off no systems that were nuclear capable. This is the first parade really since uh, February 2018 when we're expecting to see updates on what they've been working for. So a good chance to display qualitative and quantitative progress and expanding not only their nuclear forces, but their conventional forces. So I think there'll be a lot to see here. Certainly already we can tell that this is something that they've taken care to present with a particular aesthetic, given that it is taking place at night and looks really unlike any other North Korean parade I've ever seen so far. Yeah, and so we've, we've, we were hearing from our sources in Pyongyang all through uh, the day that they had heard fighter jets flying over Pyongyang uh, sometime between 1 and 2 a.m., uh, sounds of heavy tanks, equipment moving around and this also follows back on Tuesday uh, earlier this week we had similar reports that 3 4 a.m. people were woken up in the in the uh, community of uh, foreigners living in Pyongyang with the sounds of very loud noises of, of military equipment moving around um you can you just give us some insight is our parades at night common in the military world and like what what do you think would uh, motivate the North Koreans to, to parade at night uh, I think they're not particularly common uh, in, in the military world. I mean, uh, your purpose is uh, to show off what, uh, whatever equipment you have and uh, showcase it to uh, the general public uh, as well. Um, and, uh, well, most people ordinarily wouldn't show up at night, of course. Um, but in a country like North Korea, that's no problem, since you can just uh, order most of your population uh, to attend. But uh, in the DPRK, we have had some uh, parades in the past, uh, like uh, very small military uh, defilades where just the vehicles were passing uh, through uh, quickly, uh, but also massive torchlight parades, which were more civilian in nature. So uh, they do have somewhat of a history with this, but uh, the, uh, a military parade of this scale, that's, that's definitely uh, unique. Yeah, it's, it's it's definitely strange. Um, we we have just heard from um, from inside North Korea that at around uh, six thirty tonight, uh, noises of fireworks could be heard, um, which could be related to the uh, torch parades, which you mentioned earlier. We we saw photos um, several weeks ago of large numbers of youth and children rehearsing for torch parades in Kim Il Sung Square, in the center of the town. Um, and usually those two events are segmented and separate. So we would have a military parade early in the day, followed by a torch parade later at night. Um, and it could be that right now, though we're seeing this edited uh, selection of video from early hours this morning, that the torch parade is actually going on as we speak in, in Pyongyang. Um, Eust, is there, is there any particular military equipment you're on the lookout um, at this particular parade? Anything that you've been tracking to see uh, if it may emerge? Uh, well, there's definitely uh, a couple of new pieces of equipment which uh, either are featured in few parades in the past or which uh, are slated to, to feature uh, during this one. Uh, that includes a whole host of uh, ballistic missiles, which they uh, tested in the 2018 pe uh, period. Um, but um, uh, what I'm also spotting uh, just directly from the few images we're seeing is uh, that a lot of the personal equipment of uh, KPA soldiers appears to have been uh, upgraded uh, quite quite a lot. So um, I think they're they're really going to go uh, across the board on. Uh, innovations this year uh, so well, sorry what, what kind of upgrades have you seen so far um well uh, i'm seeing uh, some new uh, new body armor new uh, new uh, helmets also and um it would appear that some of their uh, uh, assault rifles uh, the type 88 is what they uh, uh, use which is an uh, ak-74 variant um they have a very bulky new muzzle flash hider uh, of some sort so um yeah uh, it's a bit uh, blurry thus far, but I definitely say there have been a lot of changes in their personal equipment. So what we're seeing right now is a video of uh, troops parading, um, playing music, things like that. Just for those of you who are new to the world of North Korean military parades, we normally see those at the start of the parade, followed by um infantry coming through in blocks of units 
Uh, and after that, we, we tend to see a, a slow build up, a slow and steady build up of, of smaller, you know, wheeled vehicles leading up to tanks, leading up to artillery and uh, rocket systems, short, medium, long range ballistic missiles. Um, so it looks like the video production is, has gone from a sort of highlights package at the start now to potentially the full show. So we, we could be in for a, a solid um, hour or two hours, maybe even three hours of coverage now, which will presumably uh, culminate in a form of potentially a form of new ballistic missile um, being shown. Um, Jongmin, have you have you any thoughts about how this is going from a South Korean perspective? Like, what what's been the move in Seoul today? Uh, it was original, and people expected that it will happen this morning. Um, and this is all coming after all the tension in inter-Korean relations after the South Korean government worker passed away in the North Korean waters. Um, it was kind of split uh, this week. People anticipating the military parade. On one hand, people, some people were worried that um, perhaps new news coming out of Pyongyang this weekend will overshadow what has been going on until now. Um, but on the other hand, people were also um, already expecting uh, new ICBMs, SLBMs and TLs uh, to be revealed in the military parade today. Uh, JCS and the Ministry of National Defense, they have been talking about it. Um, for a while now uh, with the lawmakers during the audit this week and uh, beforehand as well. So um, it was expected that it is going to go ahead today, but I don't think anybody expected that it's going to go ahead at night, which is very unprecedented. That's that's right. Um, the, the other thing is that we are, um, you know, it's been very vague as to when this parade would start we've we've had no information at all from the north koreans which is uh, completely normal uh, i've reported on these parades a few times in pyongyang and even though everyone knows that we've been in, invited to the country as journalists to cover uh the parade um even until the very morning itself be it 6 7 a.m and we've gone through all the security there is still no clue that we're going to a military parade our north korean host will say we don't know what's going on it's just an important event so it is um it's always kept very vague um just if you're tuning in right now this is the nk news uh nk pro uh live stream of north korea's 75th anniversary of the workers party of korea uh, we are a specialist North Korea website uh, focusing on North Korea. Been doing it for about 10 years now, and uh, I'm very happy to be joined by some of my colleagues right now. Um, Ankit Panda, who's calling in from New York City very, very early in the morning. Uh, we've got Yust Olimans from the Netherlands, who is a author of uh, a recent book on North Korea's military. And Jongmin Kim, who is... Uh, a sole correspondent for uh, NK News. Um, so, Ankit, you've been watching um, North Korea's WMD program for a while. Like, what what would you say is the is the sort of biggest? Like, how significant would you say it is? Is it a real threat to the United States right now, or is that still that threat still far away? Well, threats you can make sense of as capabilities plus attention and. Um, the capabilities that North Korea has demonstrated, particularly in 2017, when it conducted three flight tests of intercontinental range ballistic missiles, two Hwasong 14s and one Hwasong 15 in November 2017, uh, North Korea showed that it could um, deliver a nuclear weapon to the U.S. homeland. Uh, and that was a significant milestone. Uh, so that capability, I think, um, was something manifestly and qualitatively new that year. Uh, so at this point, what the North Koreans can show us um, is qualitative refinements to that capability. So better ICBMs, larger ICBMs, ICBMs capable of carrying multiple warheads, um, um, multiple reentry vehicles, uh, or they could demonstrate the refinement of their nuclear strike capability in theater in Northeast Asia. They have a wide range of systems that are designed specifically to hold uh, U.S. military bases in East Asia, including in Korea and in Japan at risk. So we may learn more about those systems. Something I'm looking for in particular is evidence of quantitative growth, which, uh, you know, pre-parade satellite imagery suggests that the North Koreans are going to 
parade more transporter reactor launchers uh, or TELs, that's the launch vehicles for ballistic missiles, um, they're going to parade more than they ever have before. So that, I think, will be an interesting evolution of the threat from North Korea, uh, since we'll make discussions about things like preemption, uh, deterrence in the United States, so South Korea and Japan are very different. It matters if North Korea has four to six ICBMs versus if they have, let's say, 10 plus, 15 plus today. Um, I am seeing from the YouTube comments, um, I'm seeing some questions whether or not this is live or if this was pre-recorded. To me, it seems it was pre-recorded and edited and there were intelligence um, sources telling South Korean uh, military earlier that it seems it went ahead last night. Yeah, that, that's right. It, 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 all our sources, like you can see the time there, midnight, that's the fireworks parade that we heard about from uh, people in Pyongyang. Uh, so clearly uh, this was done last night. It's not live, but we're just seeing a, oh, here comes Kim Jong-un in a Western style suit. That's interesting because we haven't seen him in a Western style suit in the parade most recently. Um, but my, my colleague Jong Min is requesting I be quiet for a moment while we just listen into what the North Korean hosts are saying. So yeah, that's uh, Kim Jong-un entering with his trademark music. Um, you can hear all the crowd uh, shouting applause for him. Uh, it's really quite incredible when you're when you're there in person, people suddenly like a bolt of lightning has gone into them, just wake up and start cheering very, very vividly, vividly when he, he comes in and we can see that happening now. Another thing I should point out, um, we've been, what so the parade stand, the, uh, the observing area that Kim Jong-un is on right now, this is a new structure. Uh, the parade viewing stand for the last uh, 10 plus military parades has been torn down earlier this year in a very, um, elaborate you can see marble there behind him it looks like they've built a very elaborate new um uh facility for him to talk i'm gonna shut up now while <laughs> Another interesting observation, uh, you can see no masks uh, being worn by any of the attendees in this parade, nor the military. Um, it suggests there's a lot of confidence in North Korea right now about the COVID situation. I'm going to be quiet again. It looks like Kim's about to speak. We will, when Kim delivers his speech, we're going to 
keep quiet and then we'll give you a quick summary from Jungmin who will be translating and just give you an insight into what he's saying. Chosonodongdanchuangyonkuetongchigoksangmuvionebiwanimio, 박정천 동지, 김숙일 동지, 김종관 동지를 비롯한 군부의 지휘 성원들이 주석단에 나왔습니다. 당과 정부 군부에서 오랜 기간 사업한 로 간부들이 초대석에 자리 잡았습니다. 초대석에는 조선노동당 장군 일흔 다섯 돌 경축 대표들이 자리 잡고 있었습니다. So yeah, as I was saying, the um, this is Chad Akar, by the way, from NK News. Uh, you can see no one is wearing any mask, and this really does seem to suggest that the country is very confident that it is indeed COVID-free. There's been a lot of question marks as to whether there could be uh, coronavirus in North Korea, um, but as one precaution, almost two months before this parade started taking place, the North... Um, completely tightened its existing uh, shutdown of the country. Uh, they implemented uh, shoot to kill orders within a one to two kilometer range along the borders of China and South Korea. And uh, as some of you will know, there was a recent um, evidence of this in the sense that a South Korean who was uh, trying to allegedly defect to North Korea by swimming was shot several hours after he arrived in North Korea and killed. Um, these are all thought to be part of North Korea's very uh, intensive efforts to keep coronavirus out of the country before this parade. Mainly we believe so that the parade itself doesn't act as a kind of super spreader event. If there is one person at this parade or two people who are infected with coronavirus, it could be extremely damaging for the legitimacy and reputation of the Workers' Party of Korea. So every precaution has been taken thus far. But it's very interesting to see paradoxically that there is there are no, no masks uh, being uh, worn here. Uh, when the officials were being introduced by KCTV just moments ago, you could see how uh, some of the officials that recently rose to power rose to stardom, such as Ri Byung Chol. Speech is starting. Sasroon, 
열병식에 참가한 열병부대의 지휘관 전투원 동무들 친애하는 동지들 영광스러운 우리 당 창건절이 왔습니다 위대한 영광의 밤을 맞이했습니다 왜서인지 유리없이 강고했던 이해에 맞는 땅 창건절은 이 영광의 밤이 드디어 왔다는 사실만으로도 너무도 감격스럽습니다 위대한 우리 당 창건 75도스 를 맞으며 나는 조선노동당 중앙위원회를 대표하여 오늘의 10월 명절을 크나큰 영광과 긍지로 빛내인 모든 분들에게 중심으로 되는 축하의 인사를 드립니다. 전체 우리 인민에게 뜨거운 감사와 축하 인사를 삼가드립니다. 동지들, 위대한 명절의 이밤 수도의 거리들과 여기 영광의 광장은 이렇듯 환희롭고 기쁨과 긍지로 설레이지만 오늘의 이 영광의 순간이 지금 전국 각지의 수많은 당원 동지들과 노동계급들 우리 혁명군대 장병들이 보이지 않는 노력과 헌신에 의해 지켜지고 있다는 것을 우리 잊지 말아야 합니다 오늘의 이 영광의 순간을 안아오고 지키기 위해 오래 들어와 얼마나 많은 분들이 혹독한 환경을 인내하며 분투해 왔습니까? 우리가 얼마나 많은 도전들을 이겨내며 여기까지 왔습니까? 특히 올해 예상치 않게 맞다던 방역전선과 자연재해복구전선에서 우리 인민군 장병들이 발휘한 애국적이고 영웅적인 헌신은 누구든 감사의 눈물 없이는 대할 수 없는 것들입니다. 조국 보이, 인민 보이, 혁명 보이가 인민군대에 마땅한 본연의 임무라고는 하겠지만 우리 장병들의 고생이 너무도 컸습니다. 너무도 많은 것을 맡아 안고 고생도 많은 우리 장병들입니다. 그래서 너무도 미안하고 이 영광의 밤에 그들 모두와 함께 있지 못한 것이 마음이 아픕니다. 바로 지금 이 시각에도 수많은 우리 구대 장병들이 영광의 이 김일성 광장에 오지 못하고 국가의 안전과 인민의 안녕을 지켜 방역전초선과 재복구전선에서 영감이 싸우고 있습니다. 우리 군대는 이처럼 적대 세력들의 군사적 위협뿐만 아니라 방역과 자연과의 투쟁과 같은 돌발적인 위협에도 국가방위의 주체로서 자기 임무를 훌륭히 수행하고 있습니다 우리 국가와 인민에 대한 그들의 열렬한 충여심에 최대의 경의를 드리며 전군의 모든 장병들에게 뜨거운 감사를 보냅니다 자기들이 피해복구 건설 임무를 완수하고도 사랑하는 집이 있는 평양행을 택하지 않고 스스로들 또 다른 피해복구 지역으로 발걸음들을 옮긴 애국자들 마땅히 이 자리에 있어야 할 우리의 핵심들 나의 가장 믿음직한 수도당원 사단 전투원들에게도 전투적 고무와 감사의 인사를 보냅니다. 
그리고 전국의 모든 근로자들에게 전수적 인사와 감사를 보냅니다. 자연의 재난을 털고 새마을 새집들의 보금자리를 편 세대들과 온 나라 가정들의 행복과 기쁨만이 깃들기를 축원합니다 우리 어린이들에게 언제나 푸른 꿈이 펼쳐지기를 바랍니다. 이 자리를 빌어 지금 이 시각도 악성 비루스에 의한 병화와 싸우고 있는 전 세계의 모든 이들에게 따뜻한 위로의 마음을 보내며 진심으로 마음속 깊이 모든 사람들의 건강이 제발 지켜지고 행복과 웃음이 지켜지기를 간절히 바랍니다. 사랑하는 남녀의 동포들에게도 따뜻한 이 마음을 정이 보내며 하루빨리 이 보건 위기가 극복되고 복관함이 다시 두 손을 마주 잡는 날이 찾아오기를 기원합니다. 동지들 오늘 우리 모두는 일심전력하여 마련한 값진 성과와 노력적 열매들을 안고 10월의 경축광장에 모였습니다. 우리가 여기에 오기까지는 정말 쉽지 않았습니다. 간고한 투쟁의 연속이었고 수없이 많은 경난들을 이겨내야 했습니다. 지나온 우리 당의 75성상이 다 그러하였지만 특별히 올해는 정초부터 하루하루 한 걸음 한 걸음이 예상치 않았던 엄청난 도전과 장애로 하여 참으로 간고하고 힘겨웠습니다. 우리는 그 모든 것을 용감히 이겨내고 자랑스럽고 떳떳한 마음으로 뜻깊은 이 자리에 섰습니다. 세인이 경탄할 이 화폭 자체가 우리를 괴롭히고 막아나셨던 온갖 재앙들이 제압되고 우리가 내세웠던 정의로운 투쟁 목표들이 빛나게 달성되었음을 보여주고 있습니다. 친애하는 동지들 오늘 우리는 우리 당의 75번째 생일을 성대히 맞이하고 있습니다. 세상에는 우리처럼 자기 당의 생일을 전체 인민이 기쁨의 명절로 대경사의 날로 성대히 경축하는 나라는 없습니다. 온 나라의 마음이 뜨겁게 구비치는 이처럼 복차고 환희로운 밤이 자리에 서고 보니 전체 인민에게 무슨 말씀부터 들었으면 좋을지 모르겠습니다. 우리 당이 걸어온 영광 넘친 75년사를 갈피갈피 돌이켜보는 이 시각 오늘 이 자리에 서면 무슨 말부터 할까 많이 생각도 해보았지만 진정 우리 인민들에게 터놓고 싶은 마음속 고백 마음속 진정은 고맙습니다 이 한마디 뿐입니다 realizing that the uh, soldiers of North Korea have been working very, very hard on various projects. We're going to, just, we're going to go back to him right now. Thank 
고맙습니다 이 말밖에 할 말을 더 찾을 수가 없습니다 세상이 놀라지 않을 수 없는 오늘의 이 승리는 우리 인민들 스스로가 이루어낸 위대한 승리입니다 우리 당에 있어서 인민들 한 사람 한 사람의 생명은 그 무엇보다 소중하며 전체 인민이 건재하고 건강해야 당도 있고 국가도 있고 이 땅의 모든 것이 다 있습니다. 그런데 이 세계에는 귀중한 우리 인민의 삶을 위협하고 해치려는 불안정한 요소가 너무나도 많습니다. 그래서 사실 연초부터 세계적인 보건위기가 도래하고 주변 상황도 좋지 않아 고민도 컸고 두려움도 컸습니다. 그러나 우리 인민은 억척같이 뻗치고 일어나 당과 국가가 취하는 조치들을 절대적으로 지지하고 따라주며 자신들의 운명을 완강히 지켜냈을 뿐 아니라 활기 넘친 모습으로 모진 고난과 시련을 강의하게 이겨냈습니다. 서로서로 서로 걱정해주고 위해주고 감싸 안아주는 아름다운 인민 이런 인민이 높은 애국심과 고도의 자각성을 가지고 서로 협력하며 살아가는 사회주의가 아니었다면 무서운 재앙을 막아내지 못했을 것입니다. 우리 인민 모두가 스스로 방역의 주체가 되어 국가와 자기들 스스로를 지키고 우리 아이들을 지키기 위한 투쟁에 한 사람같이 떨쳐나섰기에 모든 것이 부족하고 뒤떨어진 나라의 방역 부분이 일도 속에 되었고 남들 같으면 상상할 수도 없는 방역 안정 형세를 유지할 수 있었습니다. 아직 풍족하게 살지는 못해도 화목한 대가정을 이루고 단한 명의 악성 비루스 피해자도 없이 모두가 건강하니 이것이 얼마나 고맙고 얼마나 큰 힘이 되는지 모르겠습니다. 국가가 당하는 어려운 상황을 깊이 이해해주고 자기 집일처럼 떠맞는 고마운 인민도 이 세상에 우리 인민밖에는 없습니다. 지금 이 행성의 가혹하고 장기적인 제재 때문에 모든 것이 부족한 속에서도 비상방역도 해야 하고 혹시만 자연 피해도 복구해야 하는 엄청난 도전과 난관에 직면한 나라는 우리나라뿐입니다. 이 모든 시련은 동안할 것 없이 우리 매 가정, 매 국민들에게 무거운 짐으로 아픔으로 되고 있습니다. 하지만 오히려 가사보다 국사를 앞에 놓고 국가가 겪는 권난을 열 가지든 백 가지든 함께 걸머지며 성실한 땀과 노력으로 이 나라를 굳건히 받드는 고마운 애국자들이 바로 우리 인민입니다. 그래서 우리 당은 나라의 형편을 터놓으면 언제나 산악같이 일떠서는 인민을 믿고 인민에게 의거하여 모든 국난을 타개해 나가고 있는 것입니다. 늘 우리 인민들은 우리 당에 고마워했지만 정령 고마움의 인사를 받으셔야 할 주인들은 바로 위대한 우리 인민입니다. 우리 인민은 75성상 일편단심 우리 당을 받들고 성스러운 혁명 위협을 자기 피와 땀을 아낌없이 서슴없이 바쳐 지켜주었습니다. 가장 간과하고도 시련에 찬 혁명의 길을 헤쳐온 우리 당이 이 피어린 여정을 승리와 영광으로 소나올 수 있은 근본 비결은 다름 아닌 우리 인민이 당을 진심으로 믿어주고 따르며 우리 당의 위협을 지켜주었기 때문입니다. 언제나 현명한 스승이 되어 지혜와 슬기를 주었고 무한한 힘과 용기를 안겨주었으며 결사적으로 옹위하고 성심으로 받들어주며 당의 구상과 로선을 빛나는 현실로 만들어준 역사의 전능한 창조자인 위대한 우리 인민을 떠나서 어찌 우리 당의 영광 넘친 75년 사에 대하여 한순간인들 생각할 수 있겠습니까 당에서 대거조를 호소하면 천리마를 타고 허응했고 대건설을 작전하면 속도전으로 화답했으며 당의 결심을 몰부를 가림없이 무조건 실천해내고야 하는 위대한 인민이 항상 곁에 있었기에 우리 당은 언제나 든든하였고 
어떤 국경 속에서도 이 땅에 기적의 년륜을 새겨올 수 있었습니다. 나는 지남없는 충여신과 굴할 줄 모르는 토지, 성실한 노력으로서 세상 풍파를 다 뚫고 넘으며 위대한 시월 명절을 승리의 단상에 떠올린 우리 인민의 모습에서 앞으로 75년이 아니라 750년, 7500년이라도 당을 따르고 지켜줄 하늘같은 힘을 온몸으로 뿌듯이 받아 안게 됩니다. 동지들, 하늘 같고 바다 같은 우리 인민의 너무도 크나 큰 믿음을 받아 안기만 하면서 언제나 제대로 한번 보답이 따르지 못해 정말 면목이 없습니다. 제가 전체 인민이 신임 속에 위대한 수령님과 위대한 장군님의 위협을 받들어 이 나라를 이끄는 중책을 지니고 있지만 아직 노력과 정성이 부족하여 우리 인민들이 생활상 어려움에서 벗어나지 못하고 있습니다. 그럼에도 우리 인민들은 언제나 나를 믿고 나를 절대적으로 신뢰하고 나의 선택과 결심을 그 무엇이든 지지하고 받들어주고 있습니다. 설사 그것이 더큰 고생을 각오해야 하는 것이라 할지라도 나와 우리 당에 대한 인민의 믿음은 언제나 무조건적이고 확고부동한 것으로 되고 있습니다. 이렇듯 강렬하고 진정어린 믿음과 거무경련은 나에게 있어서 그 어떤 명예와도 바꿀 수 없고 수억만 금에도 비길 수 없는 가장 소중한 재부이며 두려움과 불가능을 모르게 하는 무한대한 힘입니다. 이 세상 그 누구도 바랄 수 없는 최상 최대의 신임이 있기에 나는 멸사복무의 사명감과 의지를 가다듬으며 무수한 도전들을 주저없이 맞받아 나갈 수 있었고 전쟁까지 각오해야 하는 결사전에도 나설 수 있었으며 사상 초유의 대재앙에도 강력히 대처할 수 있었습니다. 이런 훌륭한 우리 인민을 섬기고 모시고 투쟁하는 것을 무상의 영광으로 간직하겠습니다. 나는 우리 인민의 하늘같은 믿음을 지키는 길에 설사 몸이 찢기고 부셔진다 해도 그 믿음만은 목숨까지 바쳐서라도 무조건 지킬 것이고 그 믿음에 끝까지 충실할 것을 다시 한번 이 자리에서 엄숙히 확언합니다. 존경하는 온 나라 전체 인민들 여러분 정말 고맙습니다. 우리 수령님과 장군님의 마음까지 합쳐 온 나라 전체 인민들에게 경건한 마음으로 고마움에 차넘치는 진정 정중히 삼가 올립니다. 동지들, 우리 인민을 옥척으로 지키고 더 높이 떠받들며 부름 없이 잘 살게 하는 것은 나와 우리 당의 제일 사명이고 확고부동한 의지입니다. 우리 당은 이미 우리 인민이 존엄이고 생명인 사회주의를 굳건히 수호하고 우리 인민이 영원히 전쟁을 모르는 땅에서 자자선선 번영할 수 있게 평화 수호를 위한 최강의 군력을 비추게 놓았습니다. 위풍당당이 정렬한 오늘의 이 열병 대원은 조선노동당이 자기의 혁명군대를 어떻게 키웠는지 또한 그 군대의 위력이 얼만큼 강한지 똑바로 알수 있게 할 것입니다. 불과 5년 전 바로 이 장소에서 진행된 당 창건 이른돌 경축 열병식과 대비해보면 
누구나 잘알수 있겠지만 우리 군사력의 현대성은 많이 더 변했으며 그 발전의 속도를 누구나 쉽게 가늠해 볼수 있을 것입니다. 우리는 자기 당의 혁명사상으로 튼튼히 무장하고 자기 혁명리익에 전적으로 복무하는 충실하고 강력한 국방과학기술대군과 군수노동계급을 가지고 있습니다. 우리의 군사력은 그 누구도 넘보거나 견주지 못할 만큼 발전하고 변했습니다. 우리가 직면하고 있거나 맞다들 수 있는 그 어떤 군사적 위협도 충분히 통제 관리할 수 있는 억제력을 갖추었습니다. 우리의 군사력은 우리식, 우리의 요구대로, 우리의 시간표대로 그 발전 속도와 질과 량이 변해가고 있습니다. 우리 당은 우리 국가와 인민의 자주권과 생존권을 건드리거나 위협을 줄수 있는 세력은 선제적으로 제압할 수 있는 군사적 능력을 제일 확실하고 튼튼한 국가 방위력으로 규정했으며 그를 실천할 수 있는 군사력 보유의 모든 것을 다해왔고 지금 이 순간에도 부단한 갱신 목표들을 점령해 가고 있습니다. 우리는 적대 세력들에 의해 지속적으로 가중되는 핵 위협을 포괄하는 모든 위험한 시도들과 위협적 행동들을 억제하고 통제 관리하기 위하여 자의적 정당 방위 수단으로서의 전쟁 억제력을 계속 강화해 나갈 것입니다. 국가의 자주권과 생존권을 지키고 지역의 평화를 수호하는 데 이바지할 우리의 전쟁 억제력이 결코 라명되거나 절대로 선제적으로 쓰이지는 않겠지만 만약 만약 그 어떤 세력이든 우리 국가의 안전을 다쳐놓는다면 우리를 겨냥해 군사력을 사용하려 든다면 나는 우리의 가장 강력한 공격적인 힘을 선제적으로 총동원하여 응징할 것입니다. 나는 우리의 군사력이 그 누구를 겨냥하게 되는 것을 절대로 원치 않습니다. 우리는 그 누구를 겨냥해서 우리의 전쟁 억제력을 키우는 것이 아님을 분명히 합니다. 우리 스스로를 지키자고 키우는 것뿐입니다. 만약 힘이 없다면 두 주먹을 부러지고도 흐르는 눈물과 피만 닦아야 할 것입니다. 우리 당은 강력한 군사력으로 나라의 주권과 우리 영토의 믿음직한 안전을 보장하며 국가와 인민의 영원한 안녕과 평화와 미래를 수호해 나갈 것입니다. 동지들, 조선노동당의 혁명사상으로 무장하고 조국과 인민에게 무한히 중요하며 우리 인민의 힘과 넋이 있던 강의력한 최신 무기들로 장비한 혁명 무력이 있기에 그 어떤 침략 세력도 절대로 신성한 우리 국가를 넘볼 수 없으며 조선인민의 앞길을 감히 막지 못합니다. 이제 남은 것은 우리 인민이 더는 고생을 모르고 유족하고 문명한 생활을 마음껏 누리게 하는 것입니다. 우리 당은 인민들의 복리를 증진시키고 더 많은 혜택을 안겨줄 우월한 정책과 시책들을 변함없이 실시하고 끊임없이 늘려나갈 것이며 인민들이 꿈속에서도 그려보는 부흥번영의 이상사회를 최대로 앞당겨 올 것입니다. 지금까지 우리 당은 혹독한 고난 속에서 인민들과 생사운명을 같이 하면서 그리고 우리 인민의 단결된 힘을 채도하는 과정을 통하여 앞으로 우리가 무엇을 해야 하는가에 대하여 잘 알게 되었습니다. 조선노동당 제8차 대회는 그 실현을 위한 방략과 구체적인 목표를 제시하게 될 것이며 인민의 행복을 마련해 나가는 우리 당의 투쟁은 이제 새로운 단계로 이행하게 될 것입니다. 우리가 일도설수록 온갖 반동 세력들이 더 기승을 부리고 예상치 않았던 난관들도 닥쳐들 수 있지만 이때까지 우리가 겪은 시련에 비하면 아무것도 아니며 우리에게는 그 모든 것을 격파할 힘이 있고 자신심이 있습니다. 장구한 투쟁 노종에서 다져진 당과 인민 대중의 일심 단결이 있고 
우리 사회주의가 키워내고 마련한 인재 영향과 자립에 미치는 분명 우리의 전진을 주동하고 가속하는 강력한 힘으로 작용할 것입니다. 남들이 겪어보지 못한 무수한 고난과 시련의 고비들을 넘어오면서 남들이 움두도 낼수 없는 모든 것을 다 해낸 우리 당과 이민은 더큰 용기와 신심, 비상한 열정과 각오를 가지고 새로운 발전과 번영회로의 진군을 시작할 것입니다. 우리 인민을 위하여 인민들에게 더 좋은 내일을 안겨주기 위하여 무진 애를 쓰며 정성을 다해 일해 나가도록 더더욱 엄격한 요구성을 제기하고 투쟁하도록 하겠습니다. 우리 인민의 리상은 위대하며 그 리상이 실현될 날은 꼭 옵니다. 위대한 그 리상을 실현함에 총력을 다해 나감으로써 사회주의 건설의 더 높은 목표를 점령해 나가는 길에서 누구나 체감할 수 있는 혁신과 발전, 실질적인 변화를 이룩하도록 하겠습니다. 동지들, 우리는 강해졌으며 시련 속에서 더욱 강해지고 있습니다. 시간은 우리 편에 있습니다. 모두 다 사회주의 휘양한 미래를 향하여 새로운 승리를 쟁취하기 위하여 힘차게 싸워 나갑시다. 그리고 변함없이 우리 당을 믿어주시는 마음들의 중심으로 감사를 드립니다. 위대한 우리 인민 만세! Saying uh, North Korea should live forever. 만세. And you can see the fireworks going off in Pyongyang. Just a reminder, this is uh, taped uh, late last night, probably around uh, almost 1am, I'd say, by this stage, given the tapes being rolling almost uh, an hour. since the broadcast start. Now, Kim Jong-un's speech is over. I'm going to pass the mic over to Jong-min Kim, who is our sole correspondent here at NK News. She's been uh, carefully transcribing everything so far and can give us a brief summary of what's being said. Uh, I had a rough transcription just now. The main theme of today's Kim Jong-un speech was how much hardship North Korea has been going through this year, including COVID-19 prevention efforts, uh, flood damages and multiple typhoons. Um, and they also mentioned, mentioned sanctions that amidst, um, uh, amid all this, they, uh, because of sanctions, their economy suffered and their people suffered. but that Kim Jong-un and the Workers' Party of Korea will work hard to bring the quote-unquote ideal society for the North Korean people. That's Ri Chun-hee. Uh, so, yes, the main theme was how, how much hardship they have been going through. And... Uh, Kim Jong-un led his speech starting with how sorry he feels um, for the soldiers of, uh, of the country. Um, if you have been following North Korea news for the past few weeks and months, um, because North Korea suffered from typhoons and floodings, um, Kim Jong-un ordered the soldiers to actually go to uh, those places to uh, reconstruct the towns, which they um, 
claim that that they actually did in some places. So he was thanking them and he was um, shedding tears for um, how much hard work their soldiers have uh, been, how much effort their soldiers have been pouring on these uh, projects and how it aches him that they couldn't be here because they were still at the recovery projects. Um, another emotional moment for Kim Jong-un's speech um, that evening was that um, he said that he's so grateful for the North Korean people for staying alive and not contracting COVID-19. Um, he claimed that no North Korean person has contracted COVID-19 and he was very much relieved that the country was not um, the country did not suffer actual confirmed COVID-19 cases. Um, also, if you have been following news, you could see that WHO has been re, um, actually just echoing North Korean government's argument that there has been no confirmed cases despite uh, thousands of uh, testings going on in North Korea. Uh, another uh, important part was that Kim Jong-un actually mentioned South Korea. Um, this it only has been weeks since Kim Jong-un personally apologized for the death of the South Korean worker in North Korean waters. Um, although he did not mention that incident, he um, said something very similar to what he, the letter he sent to President Moon in early September in the speech uh, for the October 10th anniversary. This time he mentioned that he hopes everybody around the world stays healthy and overcomes COVID-19, including South Korea, and how he extends his warm greetings to the compatriots in South Korea. And he wants, he hopes for a day that South Korea and North Korea could hold hands again. Um, after they overcome all that, um, that kind of warm message towards South Korea, it has been a while. We we saw something like that since Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un met uh, before on the Pek Two Mountain. So right now we're seeing uh, the um, uh, flags being raised to the sound of music. Um, this is very. This is what happens at the very start of North Korean military parades every single year. Uh, so it's a sign that the actual military parade aspect is about to begin imminently. Uh, as Kim Jong-un looks down, it looks like with Chun Song Wall, the picture's a little blurry. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he's ready to observe the parade. Uh, you can see some pilots here. This is very unusual to see these edited scenes of um, pilots getting ready to get into use. Are these MiG-29s? Can you, can you fill us in? Yes, yes, these are MiG-29s, the North Korean MiG-29s, and I also saw some uh, Sukhoi 25s. Uh, those are basically the two uh, most advanced aircraft uh, which North Korea possesses. And uh, they then shot past some uh, Romeo-class submarines, which are uh, Soviet-era submarines, which are still some of the largest submarines uh, the North, Korea North Koreans use. So, yeah, the it looks like they're showing the, the tape of the pilots getting ready because about 15, 20 minutes into these parades, we normally see flybys, um, low, low flying aircraft. You'll get the, the MiGs and the Sukhois doing a, a low fly formation. And then normally you'll see um, some propeller planes uh, blowing uh, smoke in colors or making, depicting the numbers of the year of the anniversary, which is 75 this time. Um, so it looks like, I mean, the, the production here is really significantly evolved compared to the last two military parades I've seen, not just the way the square has been renovated and is being lit in a much brighter fashion than we've ever seen, but also the, the, the cinematography, it almost seems like, um, this has been done with a kind of Hollywood style in mind. Anke, have you any, any thoughts on the how this is going to be going down in D.C. with, with viewers perhaps like Trump who might be tuning in? That's true. It is, uh, it is around the American president's time to wake up early in the day. Um, I suspect the news will filter, filter in as the day goes on. Um, given that this is taking place early, a lot of Washington will be uh, waking up on a Saturday to learn about whatever North Korea is about to show off. But I suspect it will have the effect of raising North Korea on the diplomatic agenda here. Uh, it has started to drift down, particularly as the U.S. enters the final stretch of the election. But um, if Kim Jong-un was hoping to have that effect, I suspect 
this um, intriguingly produced parade will have that effect. So one thing we've been wondering about today is the day when on and, and video uh, was still absent. We were wondering, is it possible the North Koreans may not actually release this video? Um, would it be more in Kim Jong-un's interest to be ambiguous about military capabilities so close to a U.S. election? What kind of strategic tactical gains in DPRK U.S. relations do you think the North Koreans will get and get by revealing significant military capabilities, potentially new strategic weapons so close to an election where presumably they want to try and keep warm relations with Donald Trump, but we don't know. So yeah, I'm just curious, what, what what's the, the value that North Korea gets from this with the US DPRK relationship? I mean, I think I think the logic for diplomacy is, is similar to the purpose of conducting missile tests in 2017. It's a, it's a reminder that North Korea continues to expand and refine its nuclear forces. And if the US is interested in stopping that progress or stopping that growth, then they will come to the table and do a deal with North Korea that will cap that and and whatever North Korea wants in exchange for that, it should get effectively. So what we're what we're seeing with this parade, I mean, if there is an external purpose, I mean, I happen to think a lot of what we're seeing today does have a very strong internal messaging component as we just saw from Kim Jong-un. But for the purposes of the outside world and for the United States, it is a reminder that the longer the U.S. waits, uh, that North Korea will continue to grow. That, that time is not on the side of the United States. Um, yeah, that's that's interesting, and I, I think uh, you you've got a, a comment here. Uh, yeah, I just uh, thought it was interesting to note that these uh, vehicles you're seeing uh, the North Korean general standing in, uh, these are being shown for the first time, as in uh, during the last parade they uh, they showed us uh, some of these infantry uh, mobility vehicles, heavily armored uh, jeeps, and they were new then too. These are of a new type. Uh, so they're showing us that they are ramping up production of uh, such uh, armored vehicles, which are also seeing in a, in a lot of uh, Western countries, uh, of course, or modern militaries across the world. And we're also seeing white horses. Um, Jong Min, any any comments? On that? Horses. Um, which showed up in the trade data and maybe that points to how they were actually using that for the military parade. We are not sure as of now if they used those horses before. Anybody who can comment on that? Yeah, I, I've not seen the white horses, I believe, in the military parades before. So that does uh, look like it could be a uh, new development. Now, you, you'll have heard us talking earlier on about Kim Jong-un uh, being emotional about the state of the economy, um, what's going on in North Korea broadly. Just for those of you who are, are unfamiliar, this has been a, a really tough year for North Korea. We've seen the country um, under chronic sanctions since 2017, which uh, former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley, uh, in 2017 said would basically prevent North Korea exporting almost 90 percent of the value of its entire uh, normal exports. On top of that, we have the COVID outbreak, which is stopping all uh, transport cargo to a large extent in and out of the country. That's having a huge impact on North Korea's economy. We know that's effectively stopped the Chinese tourism industry, which uh, just a couple of years ago, uh, in fact, last year was we estimated around uh, between 300 to 600,000 Chinese tourists a year. And um, on top of that, two other sets of problems. We've had uh, really grave weather this year in, in Korea, particularly in August. And um, we've seen uh, three back-to-back -back typhoons, two of which really hit the north pretty badly. We saw flooding. And uh, if, that, if that wasn't enough, we've seen Kim Jong-un several times this year complain and berate his own officials for... Uh, economic mismanagement, corruption, things like that. So you add this all together um, and there's no end in sight right now for COVID or the sanctions. And you can start to understand why Kim Jong-un may be upset to a degree about the performance of his leadership. Because just uh, four or five years ago, the 2016 uh, 7th Congress, 
Kim Jong-un was um, talking up a new five-year economic plan. We uh, were expecting to see uh, that pay uh, dividends for the North Korean economy. It's not worked out very well. A lot of large state economic projects have, have stalled or are frozen in incomplete states. And the really interesting thing, I, I, I guess, will be to see how if those problems translate into military problems and kit, you know, we haven't seen missile tests for a long time. Um, do you think that could be potentially due to these economic problems translating into obstacles for the military? Not necessarily. Uh, you know, they, they simply might not be in a position where the developmental advantages are worthwhile with with uh, with testing right now uh you know we should note that we have seen a resume testing campaign beginning uh in in 2019 and carrying into early this year uh but notably that has involved the testing of systems that north korea has presented to the outside world as uh non-nuclear with the exception of one test of a submarine launched ballistic missile uh, when North Korea does test, uh, it anticipates, particularly of the strategic long-range systems, it anticipates external costs, potentially in the form of sanctions. Uh, the Trump administration, I think, showed that after the SLBM tests last October, that that wasn't really a risk anymore for North Korea. So it is possible that they may they may return to testing. But just in terms of the calendar, what we notice in the Kim Jong-un era is that testing tends to wrap up, uh, with a few exceptions, by um, October. Uh, so um, but the months of November, December, and uh, ultimately uh, January tend to be a little bit slower for missile testing. Okay, and um, I, I um, used, tell, tell us what you're seeing. There's lots of new military capabilities here. What What's standing out to you so far? Yeah, really. Um, from the lineup that they were just showing us, uh, I can see uh, well, a variety of types that, that have never before been shown. So uh, absolutely tons of the, the roughly 600 millimeter uh, oversized uh, rocket systems, which they've shown tested uh, uh, a year or two back. Um, but also new air defense systems, what seemed like new main battle tanks, uh, really uh, all across the range, uh, new and very modern, uh, well, modern looking equipment. Am, am I right in thinking the camouflage on some of these has changed as well? Or is it the light? Um, that might be the lighting. Uh, as far as I can tell, this this army drab uh, green is uh, pretty, pretty uh, common. And uh, my colleague, Collins Verko, who you can follow on Twitter, um, he says he spotted uh, some Pukguk Song 3 uh, solid fuel missiles. Has anyone else seen those? Um, had not spotted them yet, but perhaps. I spotted uh, a range of Pukguk Song 2 medium range ballistic missiles. Uh, those are the ones that have been in mass production um, since the diplomacy began with North Korea. So I'm actually quite curious to see how many we'll see. It looked like to me they might have as many as at least eight in a lineup. Um, that wouldn't be shocking, but I'm curious to see if there's more. And these are important uh, because which city do they have in range that most people don't think about and get? Yeah, so the Pukuk Song 2 is basically a system that allows North Korea to hold um, all US facilities in South Korea and Japan's main four islands, so not Okinawa, uh, at risk. And so, you know, the North Koreans have conducted military exercises with uh, the Pukuk Song 2 um, and missiles of similar range, uh, showing that, you know, they have the capabilities to strike specific uh, facilities, including uh, Iwakuni, um, um, a base in Japan where the U.S. Marine Corps is based. So it is a it is a significant capability. It is a solid propellant missile, so it's much more responsive compared to North Korea's older liquid propellant Scud missiles. Uh, so it is it is a capability that they uh, they feel is uh, an important contributor to their nuclear deterrent. And if memory serves, the first time this was tested was in February 2017. And at the time, I seem to remember it was a day uh, where there was a, some kind of large-scale Chinese political gathering. Um, relations between the two countries weren't going very well. And some analysts pointed out that the roughly 1,000-kilometer range could also hit Beijing, and that might be part of the message. 
Uh, I remember that. Yeah, I think I think the North Koreans actually broadcast some footage from um, space when the missile was on its lofted flight trajectory. That was one of the first times they they showed an image of the Earth taken from the reentry vehicle of the Pukuk Song three um, of, of the Pukuk Song two, and um, you could see part of China. Um, I'm not sure that was part of the messaging, but yes, I think I believe it was around the time of the first um, Belt and Road Forum uh, in in Beijing. So it was uh, inopportune timing for China. Yeah, I seem I seem to remember some other tests that year, which took place uh, on uh, the dates of Chinese political gatherings. I think one was uh, something relating to leaders in Africa. I was in Beijing at the time, and I remember um, Tiananmen Square was closed off in anticipation of this gathering, and. We got to the airport the day after the test, and I, I remember reading on the plane back to Seoul. Uh, I think it was People's Daily, and there was zero coverage whatsoever of this North Korean missile test that had clashed on the exact same day as this political gathering in Beijing. So, yeah, th those were the days when relations between China and North Korea are not so good. We have been hearing, though. Um, very unverified reports in uh, the Daily NK, which is another publication focusing on North Korea here in Seoul, that while no foreign diplomats are being allowed to attend this event, that there has been a very special uh, exception made for Chinese diplomats who have apparently been allowed to enter the country without the thermometer, etc. Um, as I said, it's completely unverified. All of our sources have, have not been able to confirm this, but if true, it would be reflective of um, a really warming relationship that we've seen between China and North Korea uh, since the outbreak of diplomacy in January 2018. You'll remember in 2017, there was a lot of um, tension around the peninsula. And when January kicked off in 2018, the first place Kim Jong-un went to visit was China. Uh, to visit Xi Jinping. I think he was there for his actual birthday around January 8th, 2018. And that all culminated in President Xi Jinping visiting Pyongyang in um, June last year, uh, which was a really a very significant visit with lots of pomp and splendor. And um, yeah, the relationship has sort of been evolving ever since. Um, Jongmin, uh, you've, you've told us a little bit about the South-North relationship. How would you describe it at the moment? Uh, in general, uh, well, we should remember that there was a very important escalation of tensions in June when they blew up the inter-Korean liaison office. After that, um, although Kim Jong-un suspended military actions against uh, South Korea, which was, by the way, it seemed like Kim Yo-jong's project, um, it was pretty quiet for a few months, but then just last month, a few weeks ago, because of the, the shooting and killing incident in the North Korean waters, it almost escalated again. But right afterwards, because the United Front Department, which is in charge of South Korea affairs in North Korea, um, they explained their version of the story, although it was a little bit different, it involved some apologies in South Korea um, just a day after they um, issued very strongly worded statement, um, they reverted back to um, saying that they take Kim Jong-un's apology sincerely. Um, after that, it was the military acted fast enough when the South Korean government worker uh, somehow floated into the North Korean waters and it's still contested if um, he was indeed defecting to North Korea or not as the North Korean side did not um, explain that part of the story. Um, while I have the mic, uh, let me explain just a little bit what Kim Jong-un in his speech mentioned um, about military power. Um, we are seeing all these um, soldiers marching and weaponries in the military parade right now. And Kim Jong-un's logic for arranging all this is that he wants to show the people and the world that for the past five years since the um, 70th anniversary military uh, parade, how much they have developed and how much modernized their uh, weaponry has become. And he directly said that if you come, quote unquote, if you compare it to the 70th anniversary military parade, you will clearly see. So this is definitely something meant for the outside world to see. 
as well. Um, another important, interesting thing that he mentioned about uh, military power is that uh, North Korea currently has the deterrent to control and manage any and all military threats that North Korea is facing. Uh, Kim Jong-un did not mention any specific countries like United States or South Korea or Japan or whatever. But um, this was very similar to what Kim Jong-un has been saying uh, in, the de uh, in the December plenum. Um, Kim Jong-un said that whoever um, tries to attack us uh, preemptively, we will do the same thing using our, uh, if, if they notice it, they will use their uh, strong military power to punish them. Although Kim Jong-un made a disclaimer that their um, improvement of military power is for defense purposes and the war deterrent is for um, uh, the self-protection and that they will try as hard as they can not to use them preemptively. Um, they mentioned, he mentioned um, nuclear threats as well, although also not referring to any specific countries. Um, and he also mentioned that um, it seemed like he's trying to stay low key a little bit about this. He said that uh, the military power that North Korea is trying to develop, um, it's not um, for the sake of targeting anybody else, but it's just for the sake of deterrent. So all in all, to me, it seems that Kim Jong-un tried not to stay away from being overly uh, uh, provocative, it seems. Anki, a few thoughts on that nuclear doctrine? Yeah, so uh, you know we've been we've been trying to piece together North Korea's precise uh, nuclear doctrine from a range of sources. Uh, there's a 2013 law that codifies uh, a bunch of things about the conditions under which North Korea might use nuclear weapons. Um, we have information on targeting from not only various missile tests but uh, other propaganda events. Most famously, in 2013, when North Korea released uh, quote the map of death that showed a number of targets in the United States. Uh, but it's interesting to hear Kim Jong-un, you know, rule out things like a preemptive strike. Uh, there has been some confusion in the past about North Korea potentially declaring, you know, no first use, uh, that it wouldn't use nuclear weapons first. Uh, I think I think that uh, that's a little overstated. The North Koreans tend to um, emphasize a negative security assurance. So they claim that they will never use nuclear weapons against a state that doesn't have nuclear weapons and a state that isn't allied with a state that has nuclear weapons. So that's bad news for South Korea and Japan who uh, do benefit from American extended deterrence. But um, yeah, it is a, it, it's an interesting choice of language that I think, uh, as, as Jungmin correctly says, um, um, you know, messages, uh, uh, that's a useful message internally, codifying that the treasured sword, the nuclear deterrent remains capable and remains well honed, but it doesn't explicitly uh, threaten the United States. Um, that said, you know, my interpretation of North Korea's doctrine, uh, at least from what I've been able to piece together from a variety of sources, is that they do intend to um, but they reserve the right to use nuclear weapons first, and really, their um, the the deterrent value of their nuclear weapons, as far as they perceive it, is very much wound up in that credible ability to deploy nuclear weapons first against um, whoever their adversaries might be, uh, primarily to stall and degrade the ability by the United States and allies to conduct uh, what North Korea fears will be a invasion of its territory. Thanks. Now, Yust, you're a, a specialist of North Korean conventional uh, military technologies, infantry, etc. Um, talk us through what you're seeing. Uh, yeah, that's right. Um, what we're seeing is a, a very broad uh, modernization of uh, And of course, uh, we, we have, sorry, um, uh, Yust. Oh yeah, sorry. I, I just want to interject to mention that, that these would be presumably like the largest uh, road mobile uh, ICBMs. Of course, you have silo-based ICBMs, which range even far larger in size. But uh, North Korean capabilities in re that regard are extremely poorly understood. Uh, as far as we can tell, uh, they, they probably don't operate them, but perhaps they do. Um, but yeah, largest road mobile ICBMs, uh, as far as I can tell at this point. Yeah, it might be anywhere. And the North Koreans have a unique uh, tendency to, um, you know, no country has deployed liquid propellant uh, strategic um, missiles like North Korea has. Um, countries that deploy liquid propellant ICBMs tend to prefer them to remain in silos for ease of handling. But uh, North Korea continues to show us that they keep going larger and larger. So uh, I would say the two big takeaways are this new strategic weapon uh, that we saw at the end of the parade and uh, the Pukuk Song 4A implying um, continued solid propellant progress. Those are the two that really stood out to me for uh, 
uh, at least as far as the strategic forces are concerned. Now, I, I, I've got a few more questions for you both and, and Jongmin, my colleague sitting next to me. Um, but um, just a reminder we, we, for those of you tuning in, we are watching the end credits right now. Um, this is uh, an NK News uh, remix, if you will, of the parade with uh, live commentary from NK Pro contributors, including Ankit Panda and uh, Eust Olimans of Oryx both of whom will be providing text-based analysis for NK Pro within the next 24 hours, really breaking down everything we have seen. Um, and uh, Jongmin Kim, as I said, is my colleague who's been here, um, a sole correspondent, um, sharing uh, translations and, and views from South Korea. Um, and uh, on that, I just want to go back to you, uh, Ankit. We did see two engine tests in December last year. Tell us about the length of the engine burn time and what that might mean for these new Basong 16 ICBMs. I don't know what we will call them, but what's your sense on that? Yes, I mean, first of all, presumably this would be the Hwasong 16. It certainly bears many of the characteristics of the... Hwasong 12, Hwasong 14, Hwasong 15 um, design aesthetic um, appears to be based on the Hwasong 15. Uh, yeah, so we did see, you know, uh, sh shortly before Kim Jong-un uh, at his uh, speech to the, at the fifth plenary of the seventh central committee of the Workers' Party made reference to a new strategic weapon. We saw two engine tests at the liquid propellant engine static test stand at Sohei. Um, overseen by the, academ uh, by the Academy of National Defense Science of North Korea. No images were released, uh, very little information was released, but both tests were described as important. One of the tests had a, had a very long uh, engine burn time, much longer than what would be necessary for a conventional stage in a, uh, in a, uh, a liquid propellant ICBM. Um, we had a few theories about why that might have been the case. Uh, there has been a big focus on reliability in North Korean language and talking about strategic forces. Um, not only uh, does North Korea care about demonstrating certain capabilities, but it wants to signal that its deterrent is reliable. Uh, so it is possible that North Korea was testing the engine that uh, is really at the foundation of these systems, the uh, Soviet-derived RD-250 variant liquid propellant engine that they first tested in March 2017. Uh, they may have been testing that engine for a longer burn time to see if certain indigenously manufactured components were holding up to the task. Uh, it is also possible that they have introduced a all new second stage, uh, given that I do have questions about what engine is driving the potential second stage of this ICBM. Uh, there is a small possibility uh, that North Korea could be using mixed stages with a solid propellant second stage. But again, this is very speculative. We need much closer analysis to make any kind of definitive assessment. But yes, I think uh, I think this new strategic weapon and those engine tests uh, very likely were related, uh, given that it certainly was a liquid propellant test. North Korea does not conduct solid propellant engine tests at Sohei. And now we've just seen a new large liquid propellant system. So I think putting two and two together, uh, those do appear to be related. Yust, um, if you were a military planner in South Korea or the United States, what would be concerning you most right now about what, we, what we've just seen? Um, I think we've seen uh, a lot of concerning developments on, on all fronts, really. Um, the uh, personal equipment of KPA soldiers, uh, it just uh, enhances their war fight, fighting capability in general. And uh, thus far, the South Koreans could uh, rely on, uh, on, on well, uh, an ex extensive uh, advantage in this field. I think the North Koreans are trying to close this gaps, uh, gap with, uh, you know, uh, body armor, etc. But um, uh, those new uh, long range uh, anti-tank systems, uh, those are can be extremely damaging. Uh, we've seen in uh, conflict, uh, recent conflicts that uh, uh, you know uh, large ATM, ATGM uh, capabilities uh, translate into uh, high armor losses on the other opposing side. Uh, those new main battle tanks, um, well, we don't know how how well their production of those is. They that will probably need to ramp it up in the future. Uh, they could pose a threat to uh, especially older generations uh, of South Korean tanks, of which they uh, have many. Um, the anti-aircraft uh, defense systems they've shown, uh, that could be very concerning. It, it shows they, they actually do have the ability to introduce modern systems. Um, whereas uh, the, the consensus until now had been that, uh, that the 
the, well, at least their deployment of those is uh, is uh, very limited, and their their introduction of uh, new capabilities is very limited. And uh, of course, those uh, tactical and strategic uh, missile systems, uh, yeah, they uh, seem, seem to be investing uh, extremely high amounts of resources in those. So. Uh, all those 600 millimeter uh, rockets which we saw which are capable of striking nearly the entirety of south korea those would all be uh, uh, yeah a grave threat um and uh, i i just checked i think you were correct in saying that the the, the transporter erector launcher of those icbms that they only only uh, received six of those from china so that would indeed also indicate they finally mastered uh, some indigenous production of uh, large uh, TELs, um, really a pretty big industrious, uh, industrial feat uh, for a nation which, uh, you know, is crippling, uh, has a has a economy that's been crippled by uh, years of uh, mismanagement. But, and yeah, and ju just, just on that, to give some listeners perspective, uh, Dr. Andre Lankov, um, a professor um, who lived in North Korea and is one of our regular contributors. I mean, he often likens North Korea's economy to that of Mozambique. Uh, they fall in a similar place in world rankings in terms of economic power. And um, I mean, that really goes to show how poor the country is, and yet it's somehow able to accomplish significant developments in uh, a wide range of military areas, putting satellites into orbit, you name it. Jongmin, how do you think the South Korean president is going to be reacting to this today, given his drive for peace uh, with North Korea at the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics just two years ago? I saw in a lot of the comments whether um, whether or not Moon Jae-in or Trump will take uh, these development in North Korean weaponry as provocation. A lot of people um, were talking about October surprise and whether or not North Korea will make um, provocative movements between uh, before U.S. presidential election. But to Moon, I think, and actually to anybody, uh, provocation, I think, it depends on how they want to view it. So because Moon was continuing his pro-engagement movement, um, despite everything that was going on, um, the military part of the parade itself wouldn't be that much of a glitch to whatever Moon Jae-in administration was um, pushing forward for. Um, one thing that really struck my mind was when Kim Jong-un um, talked about South Korea very directly. Um, it's been a long time since Kim Jong-un personally said anything very nice about South Korea. Um, since uh, the, the, the failure of Hanoi summit, it, uh, the relations soured between the two Koreas as well. And it the escalation of tension it led to the North Korean statements even talking about dropping out of inter-Korean agreements after losing faith in what South Korea can actually do. But today, um, Kim Jong-un actually directly mentioned that he is looking forward for that day when South Korea and North Korea can hold hands again. And that's a very symbolic message to Moon Jae-in administration because they were actually holding hands on Baekdu, right? And these Minjok thing, the, these Korean people thing, the symbolic uh, messaging, I think it was very, um, very much intended and how Kim Jong-un framed it as a warm greeting uh, about COVID-19 prevention measures. I think it sort of signals that maybe inter-Korean engagement and cooperation may um, start at one point in the close future as well, because Moon will take this as a signal for North Korea wanting to engage with South Korea as well. Yeah, and uh, I mean, just personally speaking, I do think this is um, significant effort and show that we've just seen, and it is going to forcefully remind whoever will become the next president of the United States in November that this issue remains unresolved. And uh, if it is left to the Barack Obama era policy of strategic patience, North Korea has uh, has showed us it has a playing card right now, which could result in very significant and worrying testing. We've also heard, of course, in, in recent years, North Korea talking about testing uh, into the Pacific Ocean, all those things. Any new U.S. president or if, if President Trump is reelected, will probably want to avoid. Um, with that, um, as we wrap up, I, I'd love to hear some final thoughts. Ankit, how about you? Um, let's 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 hear your your concluding analysis. 
Oh, no, I think uh, just to reiterate the point that you made, I mean, uh, you know, the uh, the Singapore Declaration where Kim Jong-un signed his name onto a piece of paper saying that he would work towards the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, I think tonight's parade just tells us, I mean, how far we've come uh, just, uh, just uh, since that summit. And uh, North Korea very much continues to show progress despite uh, all measures taken by the international community to stymie its economy. Uh, it remains committed to nuclear weapons as the cornerstone of its national defense. Uh, and of course, you know, that's not to uh, underemphasize the new conventional weapons we We've seen, but really, I think the big picture here is that North Korea's nuclear forces continue to grow. I mean, this is the fifth ICBM design that we've seen North Korea parade through Kim Il Sung Square, uh, and I think it's quite likely that this one is is slated for testing, unlike the first two ICBM designs that they showed off in parades. Uh, so it looks like the KN14, or sorry, the Hwasong 14, Hwasong 15, and now apparently what may be the Hwasong 16 are going to be the topic of conversation uh, for uh, weeks and months to come. Uh, used. What, what, what's your assessment overall? Uh, yeah, uh, another one of those North Korean parades that, um, from an analyst uh, point of view, uh, it, it, it leaves you stunned for for a while. Uh, um, uh, so many new systems. Um, there's really uh, a lot of uh, analysis ahead uh, to try and figure out uh, how much of these uh, represent uh, immediate uh, uh, improvements in technology, uh, how much of these are just uh, tentative and they'll uh, try to uh, get under control in the, in the near future um, and in, in what numbers. Uh, and, uh, you know, if you're trying to figure out uh, where they may have uh, procured this technology, uh, you can always find some some uh, lineage, lineage of uh, weapon systems to other countries. Uh, perhaps there's been sanctions violations. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff uh, to figure out here. Indeed, we do. Jong Min, any, any final thoughts? Um, overall, to me, uh, it seemed it seemed that North Korea, uh, Kim Jong Un, especially, um, a lot of it was for domestic message. Um, I think the message was like we were going through a lot, but we have a, a over um, we are overcoming that, and um, despite all of what happened, we have developed these missiles. Um, one thing that stood out to me that is that they didn't really mention Pyongyang General Hospital, which was due October 10th, um, unless I missed anything. Um, but sometimes these construction projects, they are quietly delayed or are finished a, a little bit afterwards. So we will have to keep an eye on that. Um, also, I think a lot of language that Kim Jong-un used, it pointed to how they will be gearing up whatever resource they have for the January Party Congress. In the January Party Congress next year, they will be announcing five, a new economic five-year economic plan. So if we have a chance, if we can do something like this again, um, it will be very interesting to see um, how they will frame it because this time it was quite convenient because they had COVID-19 to blame and flood to blame and typhoon to blame. But if they cannot come up with any solid achievements by January, it will be really hard for them to say anything, especially during the New Year's address, if they do anything like that. My final thought is that um, I'll become very busy. I'm an inter-Korea relations beat reporter. And to me, it seems that um, a lot of inter-Korean attempts for inter-Korean cooperation, we will see a lot of them in the coming weeks or months. I think Moon will be in a very big dilemma because domestically, a lot of um, opposition party um, lawmakers, they're um, criticizing South Korean administration for, for being um, too soft. Uh, with uh, recent North Korean behaviors. But from Moon Jae-in's perspective, this was a definite uh, olive branch coming from Kim Jong-un. So um, we'll have to see how it fans out. I just, uh, yeah, thank, thanks for all for your comments. I, 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 all of this just brings me back to Kim Yo-jong, Kim Jong-un's sister, who uh, she was commenting about the US Independence Day celebrations back in uh, July, earlier, you know, earlier this year. Thinking about it now with the hindsight that we have, um, it almost seemed like it was sarcastic. We all know President Trump was trying to have a military parade at some point, and uh, she was commenting in that letter to President Trump in, in her remarks, stating that it would be lovely for him to send a DVD so they could uh, check the U.S. fireworks display. And it really does look tonight or last night like the North Koreans have far eclipsed uh, any 
US Independence Day celebration I've ever seen. <laughs> We've seen far more military equipment revealed today than at any other parade in, in DPRK history. And um, I think this one is going to go down in the history books. On that, um, I would like to draw a close to this NK News, NK Pro uh, live commentated video cost. I want to thank Ankit, Jongmin, and Yust especially for all your great commentary. If you are not a subscriber of NK News, sign into the website tomorrow. Join. It doesn't cost uh, much, just a few dollars a week for a standard NK News subscription. And you'll be able to read some of our analysis on this. I want to say a massive uh, thanks to Nils Weissensai, who has devised all the technology for today. It's been uh, it's worked a treat, I think. Um, we couldn't have done it without him. Also want to thank uh, Collins Verco, uh, Michelle Choi, and our editor, Kelly Kasulis, all of whom have been working hard today to uh, help with coverage. And last but not least, I want to thank my wife, uh, Julia Jungmin, uh, for all the support and our new baby layout. I know I've not been here today, but I hope you understand why. <laughs> Lots of love. All right, on that, um, I just want to wrap up and say thanks, everyone, for tuning in. And um, yeah, we will be back maybe in Pyongyang next time. Okay, with that, thanks everybody.